Today, I'm going to walk you through our product template sheet and go over some important fields that must be filled out. Please note that each category of products will have a slightly different variance of inform information that needs to be filled out as each product sheet is category specific. It is important to select the correct category so that your products have the most relevant information. The category example that I'm using today is agriculture, and you can see here, fresh apples. For every product sheet, there are eight sections that are in the Excel. There is basic information, product detail information, general product features, customized features, variable pricing, and trade information, acceptable payment, and fulfillment. So we're gonna walk through each of those today. And we're gonna start with the basic information. Um, these are attributes that are important to all buyers and should be filled out for all of your items. The first is the type of product. You can select as is product if you want buyers to place an order and pay directly without negotiation. This is only available between US suppliers and US buyers and you will have to make sure that trade assurance is enabled before you can select as is product. The other option is customized products. Customized products are going to be products that are able to be customizable or where you don't want any negotiation to happen on the platform. The next field that needs to be filled out is product name. So you can put the it is a, you have the ability to put 128 characters. That is the maximum amount you can put. And a complete product name should include the name and type of product you are selling. So it is suggested to add in key specifications and attributes, model numbers, relevant certifications, and industry standard terms. Um, that way you're putting as much information as possible to the buyer of exactly what you are selling. The next thing to fill out, which is incredibly important, is your product keyword. This also you have up to 128 characters that you can use. Keywords are very similar to product names. These are the words that you think buyers might use to search for your products. So it's important that you fill out your keywords here so that you can show up more and buyers can find you in search. And we actually give use several opportunities to put in keyword information. So you can put, it's mandatory to at least do one, but we give you the option to fill in another 128 characters here and another 128 characters here. So we definitely utilize that to help you show up more in search. The next thing that we're gonna ask you is for product photo. So you can send a link here or you can also, um, when working with your service partner, send over whether it's Dropbox or we transfer images of your pictures. Um, just note which ones are of uh, which ones you would like to show first, um, and make sure that you do provide as many pictures as possible, so that the buyer has a good understanding of exactly what it is you are selling. You also have the ability to add a product video, as well as a detailed video on your, on your company. We also ask that you fill out a custom description. And what we mean by custom description um, is to fill out as much information about what makes your product special um, and what differenti differentiates you from other, other companies and other products. So this section is very, very, very specific to the category you picked. So each of these will be different. So for example, if you're a distributor and you sell um, clothes, but you also happen to sell electronics, 
you would want to make sure that you are using two different spreadsheets to fill out the information um, because we ask very industry specific things in this section so it's important um, to make sure that you pick the correct category and one thing that will help you so you can see i picked agriculture so it's going to ask me very specific questions about apples in particular. So if you are ever stuck, what you can do is you can click this right hand tab of valid values and it will populate here with some of the information so that if you are confused, um, you can reference this. Um, and something that does come up a lot is the brand name. You can put your brand name or if you're selling another brand name, their brand name. Um, and the model number would be your model number. This next section, we actually just ask for more information about your product. So this right here is what you would take from your sales sheets um, with information that you think is really relevant that you want buyers to know. What are different um, attributes that make you your product special? What are your selling points? Um, so that we, we ask you to fill it in as much as possible here um, so that the buyers get a very clear understanding of what makes your product special and why they should buy from you. And you can add as many of these as you would like, but again, as always, the more information that you have, the better. The next section that we have here um, is your trade information. So the first thing that we ask for is your type of unit. So are you selling cases are you selling by piece you can see that we actually have a a, a large drop down um, where you can pick exactly what you would like how you would like to do it so for instance if i was selling by the palette i could put that here as my unit and then the first thing i would do is put in my moq so moq stands for your minimum order quantity I put in 50 for my minimum, my minimum order quantity. And then here I'm going to put in what my price is for that 50 MOQ. So for an example, I put in for this, for these 50, for my 50 products, it is 250. And what you can do here, and, and, and a lot of confusion comes here, um, we you don't just have to set one MOQ. You can if you want to, that's why it's mandatory for the one, um, but we give you an option to add additional. So if you wanted to do variant pricing, this is where you would go to do that. So for instance, if you wanted to show for 100, you know, 100 pieces, my minimum order quantity, if it's 100, the price for that is $1.50, you can add this here. Um, and if I wanted to add another one, so for 300 products, it's a dollar. Now I would, be, I would be setting it up with variant pricing. So when the buyer looked, they would say, okay, well, if I buy more, I can see that I get a pricing discount here. Um, and, and you have the ability to do that. The next section um, is your payment. So you can choose which payment options um, you want to use, and you can use any of these. Well, I'll walk you through what each one means, but you can pick as many as you want that are relevant to your business. The first one, L slash C, stands for letter of credit. D slash A stands for documents against exception, acceptance. D slash P stands for documents against payment. TT stands for telegraphic transfer, wire transfer. Western Union stands for paying through Western Union. And MoneyGram stands for 
money for paying through MoneyGram. There is no right or wrong answer to this. It is whatever payment option you feel the most comfortable using. Um, and you actually do have the ability to add as many as you want. It's totally up to you. The next section that we ask you to go through is filling out your shipping, some of your shipping information. So it's important to put in your package dimensions. So what your package length is by seven centimeters, what your package width is, what your package height is, your gross rate weight um, in kilograms. And then here we ask for your shipping quantity. So this is one that actually um, a lot of people have some confusion with. So what we mean by shipping quantity is we're trying to basically figure out a range. So for instance, we use 50 products for our first MOQ. So if I put in 50 here, I'm saying that my lead time for that 50 products is seven days. So you basically what we're asking for is for a certain amount of quantity and you can dictate what that is, what your lead time is. Um, the reason why we ask this is so that buyers have a good grasp of how long it will take for them to get their goods. So it's only mandatory to do it once, but if you wanted to again set that range, so for 100, it may take 14 days, you can do that so that the buyer has a clear understanding. Okay, well, if I order X amount, this is how long it's going to take me to get it. And so you can see, Again, only the first one is mandatory, but we give you options here. The next thing that we ask is your logistics mode. So how are you shipping? Are you gonna ship express? Are you going to ship ocean? Do you typically ship by land um, or air transportation? You should pick whichever ones you do. Um, for instance, say I don't do land, I would just delete this here and it wouldn't need to be filled out. Um, again, it's totally up to you on what um, you would like to put in. We have a lot of questions on the shipping port, um, particularly with people that aren't used or are not comfortable exporting. Shipping port is whatever port, if you were to ship ocean, would be closest to you. So the next, the next section is the supply quantity. And what we're, we're trying to ask here um, for the supply quantity, it's actually a three-part question. So we're asking for you to put a number of the supply quantity. So how many, how many of something? So for instance, if I, for using the 50 apples, so for 50, and here I would put in pieces. How long would it take for me to actually build up that 50 so that you could ship it out? So you would put in the required time. Does it take me a day to get those 50 products so that I can ship it out? Does it take a quarter? Does it take a week? Does it take a month? Does it take a year? Um, just so that buyers have an understanding of when they, if they are ordering a certain amount of products, how long it takes for you to get that supply um, into your facility so that you can ship it out. So it's just, again, information um, to give the buyer so that they have a clear understanding of how long something will take for them to receive. Um, and then the next things that we ask for um, is a packaging description. So just giving further detail, how do you, um, you know, how do you, does it, do you ship your products? Does it come in small cartons? Does it come in large cartons? Do it, you use a certain type of pallet? Whatever it might be, just try to be descriptive there. Um, and also send in a, a picture of that packaging so that buyers can understand what that looks like. And so we ask for you to fill out, 
to provide a photo or two just because it gives more information um, to the buyer. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, it, as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.